I've been a portrait retouching artist for over 35 years, and I can promise you that before technology was available, family portraiture was really a challenge. It is nearly impossible to have everyone looking great in the same photograph. Look at this large family of three generations, and it looks like seven grandchildren under the age of five. What a challenge this is. You know, this is one of the reasons I got into technology, because when I first saw it, I saw head swaps and background swaps and things like this that were just really really hard to do with traditional media becoming so much easier with technology. So we have a little project here to work on and uh, we've got two family portraits. Here you can see there's a lot of uh, not the best expressions on everyone. You know we've got dad here squinching a little bit and we have mom here squinching and grandma's looking around saying I can't believe we're trying to do this family portrait. <laughs> And then in this one, we have better expressions on the, some of the people and not so good expressions on some of the others. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to layer these two images on top of each other and then we're going to align them together and then we're going to um, expose the good expressions on everyone. Normally when you have a job like this, you'll have one image that is significantly better than the other where most of the people look good. In this case, this is probably the image that has most of the people looking good in it. And this is the one that has more people with the, um, the bad expressions. Okay, so normally you would put the good image over the bad, so you would not have very much work to do. But in this case, since we're having a practice image here, let's put the bad image over the good, and that way we'll have a, a little bit more practice with this technique. In order to accomplish this, we're going to have our family A and family B open. Family B is going to be our um, active file, and we're going to grab the background in the layers window here and we're just going to drag it over and we're going to drop it onto the family A image file. So now we're going to have two layers here. We've got the, the original before and then here is our second image right on top. So let's go ahead and line these up a little bit better here just with our move tool. We'll just kind of bring it in and we've got our before and after here. They're not quite close together but we're going to change that in just a moment. I'm going to hit the F key on my keyboard to give me the full screen mode, the view mode that I prefer working in when I'm in Photoshop. And then I'm going to hold the Shift key down and I'm going to select both of these layers at the same time. From the main menu, I'm going to choose Edit, Auto Align Layers. And I'm just going to do the projection as Auto and click OK. So now what Photoshop has done here very quickly is you can see that it has auto aligned the family portrait here to the best of its ability. And now we have something fun to play with. Let's zoom in a little bit. And you'll notice here um, around the outside edges that they don't line up perfectly here. We will be cropping this when the image is complete. Let's zoom in to mom here. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit closer. And let's add a layer mask. The layer one is now our active layer. And we're just going to click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers window here. We'll use black as a foreground color and our brush tool with the number one retouching brush. Let's go at 100% opacity and 100% flow. And let's just choose a little brush that fits over the face. And we'll just kind of erase in her good expression. And you can get little smaller brushes here. It's not important that everything lines up perfectly, it just has to look comfortable. So uh, we can let her have a little bit of extra hair around the outside edge here. I'm going to come in a little bit like that, a little collar line. And so we've just got her new expression has come in just like that, a little bit happier. Okay? Let's practice some more. With the space bar held down, I can pan over here to Grandma. And we've got the brush here still with the black paint. We can just come right in here. and We can bring in the new head. 
What you're noticing here is that I'm avoiding doing any of the background work. When you're swapping heads, if you can avoid having to swap the entire head, then you're going to be a lot uh, farther ahead in the game of getting the work done more quickly because these edges, um, as you know with experience, are the most difficult things to tie in so that things look real. And when you know you really don't need to do the whole head, just the face and the expression is what you might want to try here. So let's go ahead and play with some of the others. Open the eyes on this little boy here. I don't think we need to do any more than that for him. And I'm not sure what this little guy looks in the other one, so let's turn off the layer of visibility and see. He does look a little happier in there, doesn't he? But people have moved quite a bit in this one, so I don't know if we're going to get away with it or not, but let's give it a try. We'll just kind of color over his little face here down to his chin. Now we will have to do a little bit around the edges here because his head is in a different angle completely. We'll see if, how much we can get away with. Sometimes there's a little tying up to do around the edges but not always. I think we I think we faked that just fine. Alright. Not bad. And finally, dad. You'll also notice that it's not always important to do the whole face, you know, and that his mouth is moving back and forth, so we're going to take his mouth as well here. But um, it's not important to do any more than you have to do. And you do want to turn that layer of visibility off and on when you're working like this to make sure that you're not changing somebody's expression like that, because you certainly wouldn't want to leave someone's mouth a little bit lopsided, would you? <laughs> and, um, there we go, get him out like this. And now let's zoom out a little bit. Check on that one little boy at the bottom. Nope, he was better in the top picture. And this little girl at the bottom. We'd have to move her completely over. So let's save this head for another technique, okay? So zoom out again here. Center him up. So, so far we've got a better expression on everyone. And now I'll show you another technique for swapping a head by hand. Since we already have this image open, let's just zoom in to the little girl. Okay, so we have the better expression is on this image in the back. And we have the poorer expression on top here. Now, normally you would have these two images open and separate from each other, but right now, since we've layered them here, we've got both images in the same place. So I'm going to start out by turning the layer visibility off on the top layer, activating layer zero, and we're just going to take the lasso tool here, and I'm just going to circle the little girl's head, just like this, okay? Then we're going to make a new layer via copy, that's layer, new, layer via copy or your keyboard shortcut command or control J which will cut this little head out so I'll turn that layer visibility off and you see it's on a layer all by itself let's just bring this layer up over top of the other one so now we've got um, our good expression is now layered on top of the one that was not as good okay so normally, like I say, we'd be dragging it in. We'd have the former image open. We'd circle it, make the new layer via copy, and then just uh, drag that layer over and drop it on this new image the same way that we drag the original image over uh, when we uh, line these up uh, in the first place here. So we've got this one going. And so what I'm going to do right now is, temp is I'm going to temporarily turn this layer off, and I'm going to make a new layer on top of it with nothing, nothing on it at all. We're going to use the brush tool and we're just going to take this little number one retouching brush here at 100% opacity and 100% flow. We're going to open the swatches window and take a color that does not exist in that area of the face. I chose that bright pink color right here. And what I'm going to do is make a little tiny dot in the inside and outside corner of this little girl's eyes like that. Okay. And I'm going to make a mark where her nostrils are and a mark where the edges of her mouth are. So now I know where all the pieces are. I used to try lining this up with rulers and everything else, but I'll tell you the truth, this is just the fastest and easiest way to do it. Now, we're going to drop down to the layer 2 here, that's the layer without the paint on it, 
and using the move tool here I'm going to start bringing my little girl into position. I'm going to have to uh, choose um, if I want to tip her head I would choose edit free transform and I would then lock in one of the dots like this one is in a good spot here in the center of uh, the corner of her eye here and then press outside so that I can rotate my little image up a little bit and line up the eyes where they need to go. I'm not getting a visual on this probably because I'm zoomed in so much. Let's zoom out a little bit here and see if that helps us. There we go. Then we can accept that transformation by clicking on the little check mark that was up here. And now you can see what we've done here is we've put her her head into position and we've tipped her head slightly so it kind of fits into the space where she was before. Her nose uh, nostrils are going to be different a little bit because her chin is tipped up here which makes her nose appear a little bit shorter. Here her head's tipped down which makes her nose a little bit longer but these little guidelines will kind of give you an approximation of where these pieces are. Whoops, I just hit my Wacom tablet. See, it shows me all my little keys. Did you see that pop up over here? This is on my little Intuos 5 and it shows me when I um, hold over it which one of these key keys I have so um, that's a real neat feature of it and I work with my tablet and my lap so every once in a while I lean on that okay so now we don't need our little dots here anymore on the subject's face so let's activate that layer 3 we'll drag it down into the garbage can and get rid of it because we don't need it anymore now we are going to put a layer mask on this layer but let's hide everything on it okay so hold the option or alt key down and then press on the layer mask icon so we'll get the black mask in here and then with the brush tool and white as the foreground color we'll still use our number one retouching brush we can just come right in here and we can erase in that better expression right where we need to have it and make sure that you get the side of her jaw here so that her head we're not going to give her a really wide looking face and again we just put in all as much as we need but no more okay because the more you get see what's happening here we're getting the t-shirt now and the more you put in the more you need so you kind of go back and forth with this a little bit I think I'm going to get away with this pretty good but let's reverse the foreground and background colors get a little smaller brush now just to tidy up in here and to see how much of this we need to put in this is called faking it guys. I'm getting the necklace back in again so I hit the X again so I, I reverse the foreground and background colors. There we go. And that gives it a little design here, a little different design than what she had before. There we go. Good. Let's zoom out. Turn the layer visibility off and on. Very nice. So those are two of my favorite techniques for swapping heads. One is to auto-align the layers and then to erase out the bad expressions and let the good expressions shine through. And the other is to bring in a head from another image and then line it up carefully and then apply a layer mask hiding all so that you can reveal in the best expression on top of the one that was not so good. So when this job would be completed, what we would do is, of course, inspect it and make sure that every Everyone in the family portrait is looking good. Very good. Then we would um, we would flatten this image, duplicate the background, copy here, then zoom in and you're ready to do your general family portrait retouching, just the regular facial retouching that you would do, starting with probably <laughs> this little dot on our subject's head right here that's been looking at me ever since we started this project. So um, now there's other things that you swap out as well. Sometimes it's not important to swap the whole head. Sometimes it's just from the nose down. Sometimes it's just the eyes you're swapping out, things like that. When you want to swap expressions, look at what you need to do. Don't do any more than you have to and try to avoid doing the edge work because whenever you have to take that hair and blend it into the background image and everything, you're uh, looking at a little bit more time in the work and it's usually not necessary to do it. You know, sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not so just decide what it is that that is uh, incorrect about the expression or that could be better about it and then just do the work that you need to do in order to bring out the very best expression that the subject has 
So I'm Jane Connors-Leiser, and thank you for joining me this in this session on um, head swaps.